Hi. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the hypothesis test for one proportion. In this test, we're going to use a sample proportion and measure it against what we think the population proportion should be to determine whether or not we're right about what that population proportion should be. Let's take a look. If we're going to do a hypothesis test for one proportion, we have the following requirements. Uh, our data that we use should be taken from a simple random sample. And we want to check and make sure that n times p times 1 minus p is at least 10. So n is the sample size, and p is the probability uh, of success if we look at these as, as binomial experiments. So we want uh, this number to be at least 10. So that's the check that we'll do uh, to make sure we've met the requirements to use a normal distribution. The test statistic uh, for this test is the z-statistic. Uh, it's the difference between the sample proportion and our null hypothesis proportion uh, divided by the standard deviation for the proportion sampling distribution. Um, we don't really need to know this formula. Our calculator is going to compute the z-statistic for us, but uh, that is the z-statistic used when we are testing for one proportion. So let's look at an example. Uh, it says the Energy Information Administration reported that 51.7% of homes in the U.S. were heated by natural gas. A random sample of 200 homes found that 115 were heated by natural gas. Does the evidence support the claim or has the percentage changed? And we are going to use 0.05 as our level of significance. So we will start with our hypotheses. Uh, the null hypothesis in this case is going to be what the administration claims. They claim that the proportion is 0.517 or 51.7 percent. Okay. The question we are trying to answer is whether or not this claim is accurate. Okay. The question says, does the evidence support the claim or has the percentage changed? Notice it does not say has the percentage gone up or has the percentage gone down. All it asks us is has the percentage changed. So the alternate uh, hypothesis we should use here is that the proportion is not 51.7%. Uh, okay, unless we are testing specifically for whether the proportion has gone up or gone down, we should use this two-tailed test uh, and just use proportion not equal to 0.517 as my alternate hypothesis. Okay, uh, the other thing we're going to need to do here, we want to do our check. We want to make sure that n times p times 1 minus p is at least 10. Okay, so in this case our n is the sample size, which is 200. Our p is 0.517 and then 1 minus 0.517. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. So here it is and it looks like we're at almost 50. So we are we are well above 10. So we are we are good. Okay, uh, we also need the sample proportion. The sample proportion here, it says 115 out of our sample of 200 were heated by natural gas. So our sample proportion is 115 over 200. Okay, so now we're ready to find our test statistic, which is the Z statistic. So I am going to go to stat and over to tests, and we are doing the one proportion z test. So if we do a hypothesis test for one proportion, we're going to use option number five, the one prop z test. Okay. And it is asking me first for the proportion for my null hypothesis, which is 0.517. And then it is asking me for x and n. x would be the number of homes with the desired characteristic, which in this case is homes heated by natural gas. N is the sample size. And we are doing the two-tailed test, so I want the left option to be highlighted. So again, if you're looking at those options, we've got the two-tailed test, and then we've got a left-tailed test, and then we've got a right-tailed test. 
Uh, in this case, we want the two-tailed test. Okay, so I will go down to calculate, and it gives me a Z statistic of 1.641, and it gives me a P value of 0.1. 0, 1. Okay, so my p-value is 0 0.101. I'm going to compare that to alpha. In this case, it is greater than alpha. It is greater than 0 0.05, which means we should not reject the null. Okay, so even though our sample proportion is a little bit different than the null proportion, uh, we do not have sufficient evidence to reject it altogether. Okay, so our conclusion is going to be that there is not sufficient evidence uh, to reject the administration's claim that the uh, proportion is 51.7%. Or in other words, our evidence does support the claim. Okay, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that 51.7% of homes are heated by natural gas. So there is one way I can uh, give my conclusion. Okay, so let's look at a second example. A recent study claims that 75% of college students have cheated on at least one assignment or one exam during their time in college. But the student body president believes that the actual percentage is lower than that. An anonymous survey was given to a random sample of 200 students and 131 of them admitted to cheating on at least one assignment or exam test the claim using a 5% level of significance. So we will start with our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is going to be that the proportion of students who have cheated is 75% as what is claimed. And the alternate hypothesis is going to be that the proportion is actually lower than that. That is what the student body president believes to be true. Okay, so let's do our quick check to make sure we've met the normality requirement. Uh, we want n times p times 1 minus p to be at least 10. So n is 200, p is 0.75, so 1 minus p would be 0.25. And it looks like that is about 37 and a half, so that is more than 10, so we are good. Okay, so we need to find our z test statistic so I will go to stat tests oops and we want the fifth option which is one proportion z test my null proportion is 0.75 my x would be the number of students who admitted to cheating which is 131 my sample size is 200 and we want the left tailed test so of these three options we want the one in the middle to be highlighted the left tailed test and then I will go down to calculate and it gives me a Z value of negative 3.103 and that is a P value of 9.59 times 10 to the negative fourth power. So that's a very small P value. That's 0 0.00096 approximately. So we have a very small p-value, uh, which means, you know, our, our sample data we collected is very unlikely to have occurred given that the null hypothesis is true. This is an unlikely scenario. So we are going to reject that null hypothesis. Okay. We are going to reject it. So our conclusion is going to be that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the actual proportion is lower than 0.75. Okay, our evidence does not support the null hypothesis. So there's my conclusion. Okay, so our evidence supports the student body president's uh, belief as opposed to what was claimed in the study. Okay, so that's what it looks like to conduct a hypothesis test for one proportion.